Duelist Alliance is well known to be one of the most beloved eras in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! history. Many years ago, while playing Yu-Gi-Oh! with my friend Sam to give him credit, an interesting question came up. Was there a gap where Dimension of Chaos was legal at the same time as all of the Duelist Alliance era cards before they were banned? The November 9th, 2015 list was one of the biggest and most notorious ban lists ever, and it devastated players all around the world. It utterly destroyed all of the Duelist Alliance era decks, namely Necros, Shadal, Klee, and Burning Abyss. We didn't do hardly any digging into it and played on. However, while talking to some other friends one night last year, this topic was brought up again. And what we discovered is epic. We found a small four day gap in time where full power Cosmo and Clown Blade are legal as well as all other Dimension of Chaos cards, while none of the Duelist Alliance era decks had been demolished by the list yet. And not only that, there was a YCS that occurred during this small four day gap in time. We have compiled all of the details for you in this video, and now I proudly present to you the best format you haven't heard of yet. A format we named Finish Line. the format finish line because it is the finish line for the Duelist Alliance era while being the starting line of the Pendulum era of Yu-Gi-Oh. I also named it after a card that a fan sent me where Card Card D is crossing a finish line. Pendulums were of course already around and were introduced in Duelist Alliance itself but the only meta Pendulum deck throughout the Duelist Alliance era was Klee, which is an anti-meta deck and not like the high combo decks that we later knew Pendulums to be. The Master of Pendulum structure deck was not released until December 3rd, 2015. Performer Pals were around, but they weren't a great deck until early 2016 after Breakers of Shadow was released, which led us to another controversial list commonly known as the Pepe Emergency List, which went into effect on February 8th, 2016. A lot of major changes in Yu-Gi-Oh happened over the span of just a few months, but we are going to be focused on an even smaller four day period of time between November 5th through 8th of 2015, with the Duelist Alliance termination list going into effect on November 9th, 2015. Dimension of Chaos was released on November 5th, 2015 worldwide in the TCG, and was released on November 6th, 2015 in North America. Dimension of Chaos gave us Magispectors as a deck, which immediately became meta, as well as releasing tons of Cosmo support, making Cosmos even more relevant than they already were. So during this four day period in time, Dimension of Chaos was legal, as well as the Duelist Alliance termination list not yet being in effect. However, players insist on having formats defined by official Yu-Gi-Oh! Premier events. That's why GOAT format is defined by Shun and Jump Championship Indianapolis from 2005, or why Edison format is defined by YCS Edison from 2010. We had found our perfect gap in time, but we still needed to cross our fingers for a Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series tournament to have occurred during that time. To our luck and much excitement, there was one. YCS San Jose. YCS San Jose was won by Jesse Samick, who piloted Cosmos all the way to the trophy. Top 16 for the event was represented by nine Cosmo decks, four Necros decks, one Burning Abyss deck, one Magispector deck, and one Shadal deck, with top eight being represented by six Cosmo decks, one Magispector deck, and one Shadal deck. We had indeed found our event to define a format that was once only a wishful theory for us players who loved playing during that era of the game. Therefore, Finish Line Formats follows the July 16th, 2015 list and is based on YCS San Jose. There was no updated list between July 2015 and the November 2015 termination list. The last legal set in Finish Line is Dimension of Chaos, so that makes the card pool include everything from Legend of Blue Eyes until then. Since this is 2015, the format is under Master Rule 3, so Pendulum Zones are their own independent zones and you can Pendulum Summon as many monsters from the extra deck as you want, versus today where you are limited to the extra monster zone and zones that a Link monster points to. Upon further research and looking back on this small period of time, however, one thing sticks out more than anything else. No one 
was playing Brilliant Fusion. I probably shouldn't say no one, because I'm sure some people were, but it was an engine not seen in top decks. Looking at the top decks for YCS San Jose, for example, Brilliant Fusion is nowhere to be found. Brilliant Fusion wasn't popular until later when it started to gain traction, and was finally majorly popularized by Patrick Hoban, who would famously use King of the Pharaoh Amps to search Xaver Palamoro in order to summon Nachiria Beast. Nachiria Beast being an absolute pendulum killer during pendulum format, which began in December of 2015. Brilliant Fusion is very important to discuss because it takes Clownblade from being a fun rank 4 deck to being one of the three best decks in the format. After playing extensively, doing research for this video to introduce players to finish line format, we discovered that Clownblade is possibly the best deck. Here is our tentative tier list that we came up with based on our findings, and I will now be talking about the best decks that you should play. First up, Clownblade the main combo deck of the format. It seeks to end its turn on a large number of Xyz monsters like Abyss Dweller and Giant Hand while maintaining its resources with cards like King of the Pharaoh Imps or Perform Mage Damage Juggler. There are two main schools of thought for Clown Blade deck building high combo and mid-range. High combo tries to overwhelm the opponents with large combo lines and by spamming Xyz monsters. Mid-range will act similarly, but will only make one or two Xyz monsters and play traps like Phoenix Wing, Wind Blast, or Divine Wrath to back up those monsters. Brilliant Fusion is a game-winning card for this deck, setting up the Performage engine and providing extra summons. It is hands down the best card in the deck. Magispector, a fast and consistent control deck. It aims to gather a continuous loop of disruptions through its searchable spells and traps. Those spells and traps will restart the loop by tributing the Magispectors that can then be Pendulum Summoned back to search for more spell and trap disruptions. Due to the inherent protection effects of Magispectors, as they cannot be targeted or destroyed by opponents' card effects, board wipes such as Raigeki, Dark Hole, and Exiton Knights will have a minimal effect against this deck. And due to its Pendulum Summoning mechanic, it has an endless supply of monsters to keep hitting with. It is also important to remember that Pendulum Zones were still their own zones at this point, making the deck all the more powerful by being able to set more spells and traps. Cosmo. This chaotic amalgamation of the Wizard of Oz and Star Wars operates by using pilots to summon ships. Cards like Cosmo Farm Girl and Emergency Teleport will give you quick access to the larger monsters and essentially create a firing range out of your opponent for you. Probably the hardest hitting deck in the format, the large ships such as Dark Destroyer cannot be targeted, so they are incredibly hard to remove by normal means. And even if they are destroyed, they can replace themselves with a smaller but still powerful ship or pilot. The pilot Scarecrow can also special summon a banished ship, giving you further access to giant monsters. While the deck has a higher chance of bricking, this can be mitigated by the field spell Cosmo Town, which can mulligan up to three Cosmo cards away, giving you a brand new hand. Dark Destroyer steals the show for this deck, and is a card that must be respected by all other decks in the format. Moving away from the big three, let's take a closer look at the decks that are currently knocking at the door of Tier 1. Burning Abyss, an incredibly consistent deck, it utilizes a series of level 3 monsters to Xyz summon into a large toolbox, but will mainly go into their boss monster, Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss. With it focused on sending cards from the deck to the graveyard, you'll find that most of the cards in the deck will benefit from being placed there. Cards like Graf, Seer, or even Farfa will have large utility for combos and board setups. The Terra Top engine is also at full power at this time because High Speed Riders is legal. Now, the deck is a control deck, so it plays a large number of of trap cards, each one either being game winners or being both a disruption and triggering a Burning Abyss effect. Cards like Fire Lake, Karma Cut, and Fiend Griefing will be almost guaranteed to be just sitting in the back row. Burning Abyss is also a very hard deck to fight through because all of their monsters float and trigger in the graveyard. Evil Swarm. The quintessential definition of an anti-meta deck, Evil Swarm focuses on summoning its own boss monster, Evil Swarm Ophion. This deck destroyer of a floodgate prevents the summoning of level 5 or higher monsters and can add in Infestation Pandemic that protects it from all spells and traps. While not great in Clown or Magispector matchups, this little beast of a deck will tear through Cosmo, Shadal, Hero, Psyframe, and any other high-level monster deck. And while the main focus of the deck is to summon Ophion, don't think that that is all it has to offer. Capable of making consistent rank 4s, the extra deck becomes a toolbox with a tool for all situations. It can also play every good Floodgate in the format without issue. 
as anti-meta decks do. Zombie Sworn slash Light Sworn variants. Like the other rank 4 decks in this format, this deck seeks to use the extra deck to its fullest potential. But unlike Clown Blade, the Light Sworn decks have access to Synchro monsters. With strong tuner monsters like Raiden and Yuta Zombie, the extra deck bursts to life, able to sling out incredibly strong Synchro monsters like Psyframe Lord Omega or Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. And now that we have widespread access to the previous YCS only prize card Minerva the Exalted Light Sworn, this powerhouse of a deck can now be played by even more people. Very similar to Cyberstein and Goat format, which was also a prize card. You will also find Brilliant Fusion fits nicely in this deck as well, being able to send Wolf or Damage Juggler to set up Synchro or Xyz plays. The next best decks are the usual suspects from the Duelist Alliance era, namely Satellar Knight, Hero, Necroz, Shadal, and Klee. Satellar Knight, like Clownblade, can spit out rank 4s like it's nothing. They also have Deneb, which continuously adds resources to keep the deck coming. Satellar Knights take advantage of reinforcement of the army being at 3, as well as Call of the Haunted and Oasis of Dragon Souls to keep triggering their monster's effects. Tether Knights also have their own counter trap and quick play spell, making the deck even harder to defeat. Heroes also take advantage of reinforcement of the army being at 3, as well as a Hero Lives being at 3, and having Emergency Call and Shadow Mist. Heroes are possibly the most consistent deck of the format because of all the search cards at its disposal, and has incredible meta matchups because of its ability to match change into Dark Law on a whim. Dark Law is a walking macrocosmos that punishes your opponent for searching once per turn. Heroes also have access to the rank 4 toolbox, just like Teller Knight, Clown Blade, and Evil Swarms, making them more than just protect the Dark Law. Necroz, once the mightiest and most consistent deck of all time, has been through a couple of ban lists at this point, but are still consistent and very powerful, especially with their boss monster Trishula, which banishes a card from hand, field, and graveyard. Necroz also has Unicor at their disposal in order to negate the effects of all monsters summoned from the extra deck. This turns off cards like Dark Law and Winda, for example, which can be trouble. Necroz also has access to the rank 4 toolbox because of Manju, Sinju, and Unicor, giving them more options than just ritual summoning big monsters. Shadal has also been through a couple of ban lists at this point, but still has its main boss monster, El Shadal Construct, available to it. Construct auto kills any special summon monster that it battles, making attack points pointless, as well as sending a Shadal card from your deck to the graveyard. Shadal also has its own floodgate and El Shadal window, which limits special summoning to just once per turn, while she cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Shadals are another deck made better by the existence of the Perform Mages, because they can fuse for Construct from deck by sending a Shadal and a Light Monster to the graveyard if your opponent controls a monster that was summoned from the extra deck. Klee, like the last two decks, has been through the ban lists from earlier in 2015, so it only has two Scouts and one Sacrifice at this point. It also doesn't have as many floodgates to take advantage of because Vanity's Emptiness and Skill Drain are both at 1. However, Klee does have 3 Wavering Eyes to take advantage of during this time. Klee is played best as a control deck, and with the Pendulum Zones being their own independent zones like mentioned earlier with Magispector, the deck doesn't have to worry about needing room in the back row. Klee can also be played as a Towers Turbo deck because of all of the draw cards available in the format, with Towers itself still being at 3. Upstart Goblin, Chicken Game, and Into the Void are all at 3. Terraforming is also at 3, so adding Chicken Game or Pseudo Space to reuse Chicken Game is made easy. Which brings me to discussing individual cards that are very impactful to the format. There are other decks that are very good and very playable, but all of the most powerful ones have been discussed. More decks can be found in the tier list or on your own. Please explore the format for yourself and see what you can come up with. Brilliant Fusion makes so many plays possible and elevates Clown Blade to tier 1 status as discussed earlier, but can also be splashed into many other decks, like Light Swarms for example, which were also discussed earlier. Brilliant can be played in any deck that you can think of, where you can take advantage of the Perform Mages and the second normal summon that Seraphonite provides. Now, Upstart Goblin and Chicken Game are both at 3, as I brought up when I was going over Klee. These cards provide consistency to any deck that you want to include them in. Usually lower tier decks and FTKs like Exodia, which is in fact a deck in the format, but like I just said, they can be added to anything. Another draw card that can and should be added to every deck is Max C. Yes, the dreaded Max C is legal at 3 in finish line. There are no cards to stop it either, except cards like Divine Wrath and Cyframe Gamma. You can play Cyframe Gamma, but you're going to be running another brick next to Gym Knight Garnet if you are playing Brilliant Fusion, making Cyframe Gamma better integrated into decks like Shadal, for example. There is no Solemn Strike yet. There is no Called by the Grave. There is no Infinity. There is no Talents. 
Max C is just a card to be respected and played around if your opponent drops it on you. Max C is the great equalizer and allows for very fun and interesting games if you and your opponent both draw well and see it. Max C is also a game winner though. If you draw well and draw Max C, and if your opponent draws average or bad, you are going to win that duel unless you don't know what you're doing. Maxi does, however, have better matchups than others. Against Magispector or Klee, you are only going to get to draw one card, and that's if your opponent decides to still Pendulum Summon after setting up their scales. In other words, you can make your opponent go neg and waste their Maxi. Cosmo will also often only summon once per turn, so that means only one draw. But Cosmo has a nasty OTK that is hard to stop, so they will gladly take the Maxi challenge and come out on top. Maxi chain to Brilliant Fusion or Instant Fusion is dead and disrupts turns, especially because of Elder Entity Norden, or Noden as it used to be called. Which leads me to discussing our next impactful card, Instant Fusion. Every deck that makes rank 4s plays 3 Instant Fusion. Clown Blade, Light Sworn, Teller Knight, Hero, Evil Swarms, all of them and more. It has to be played because Norden makes Instant Fusion that good. While we're still near the topic of Max C, it can also be searched by its little brother and other relevant card, Retaliating C, which can also search a great side deck card in Flying C, which prevents XC summoning. Retaliating C is activated against Brilliant Fusion, so that cards sent off of it as well as any subsequent cards played are banished instead of sent to the graveyard. Retaliating isn't as useful in every matchup like Max C is, but it is devastating against Clown Blade and should at least be cited. Moving past Max C, we have the legendary win button card, Vanity's Emptiness. There is a reason why Vanity's is still banned to this day. Set up your board and chain Vanity's to E-Telly, Instant Fusion, Brilliant Fusion, Shadal Fusion, etc and you can very well get an easy win. It is only at one, but that makes it even more deadly low-key because back row destruction is sided and not mained in this format because there aren't as many floodgates running around to get rid of. Another card that can be considered a win button is Soul Charge. Soul Charge is at one in finish line as well, and for good reason. Summoning any number of monsters from the graveyard in the late game probably wins you the duel, even though you can't attack the turn you activate it. How this card is legal while Monster Reborn is banned is still very confusing to me, especially because nowadays it's the opposite. Destruction cards also need to be mentioned because Raigeki and Torrential are at 1 and Dark Hole is at 2. Destruction cards out problems already discussed like Dark Law, Retaliating Sea, and Vanity's Emptiness. Raigeki can also be comboed with Abyss Dweller, which is the best Xyz in the format. Abyss Dweller, I have to say, is the best Xyz in the format overall because it hurts almost every major deck. In our lists, we found that we needed to run at least two as a mandatory staple in the extra deck. It hinders Clown Blade, Burning Abyss, Shadal, Heroes, Light Sworn, Necros, and even Cosmo because their ships won't trigger when they hit the grave. While we're still on the topic of Abyss Dweller, Forbidden Chalice is the best counter to Dweller, which I've already explained is very powerful. Chalice also counters Dark Law, Unicorn, Winda, Retaliating Sea, and even Flying Sea if your opponent sides it against you. It provides extra utility as well if you need it because of the attack boost effect. Although it does have the same problem as Effect Veiler where it is useless against Cosmo and Magispector decks. Hand traps actually aren't that useful yet because Effect Veiler is useless against Cosmo and Magispector, and Cyframe Gamma makes you play a brick next to Garnet. But the one hand trap you have to side is Droll and Lockbird. This is not just for decks that search a lot like Necroz or Hero, but for FTKs that do exist in the format because of Chicken Game and other draw cards being at 3 as discussed earlier. The last cards I want to discuss before getting to the deck profiles are Dinko Sekka and Mystical Space Typhoon. These cards are your main back row hate because cards like Evenly Matched, Twin Twisters, and Heavy Storm Duster don't exist yet, and Heavy Storm and Harpy's Feather Duster are banned. Dinko Sekka is an auto win versus Magispector. In our testing, every time I saw it versus Magispector, I won. The best card to counter Dinko is Solemn Warning, which is only at one in finish line, so in short, Dinko is a win button against back row decks. Some decks like Shadal or Necros will often main deck Dinko because of how powerful it can be. Mystical Space Typhoon is not nearly as great as Dinko, but it will get rid of Floodgates and Pendulum Scales for you. The deck profiles I'm going to be showing are decks that my friends and I put together while playtesting and researching for this video. These are not historic deck lists, and I won't be showing any historic deck lists because many of the builds will be drastically different in hindsight because of Brilliant Fusion. For this part of the video, I'm going to be making closing statements and you can pause the video on any deck that you are interested in. You will find that there are many other cool, fun, and viable decks in the format making finish line all the more enjoyable. This video was a long time in the making and I wish I would have investigated on that night in 2016 where we first thought of the possibility because 
we could have been playing this amazing, awesome, fantastic format way sooner. This is the format that my friends and I have been playing the most over any other format, and it is the format that I have hinted at and hyped up here and there on my Discord server. Duelist Alliance is possibly the most beloved time frame in Yu-Gi-Oh history. Finish Line is the format that captures the end of the Duelist Alliance era and the very beginnings of the Pendulum era. All of your favorite decks from this time are not only playable, but are viable, and become more viable the more you practice. I do wish Lavable Chain was still around during this time because the format would be even more wacky and fun, but that's just me. Max C, you may find to be annoying to play around, but this is in fact a historical format, and as a historical format, nothing can be changed, and it is set in stone. If we are going to change formats to match our preferences, then that takes things into fan-made territory, and we didn't want to present another fan-made format, like when people play GOAT format without the Trinity, for example. We wanted to present a real, historic format that actually happened even if it was only for a brief period in time. I want to thank my friends in the Bropire group chat for helping with the research and naming of the format. I want to thank Jackson the most because he put in the most work with me and play tested with me, maybe even put in more work than me. <laughs> Lastly, I want to thank all of you for watching and thank you all in advance for playing this format because it is now my favorite format to play. All of my favorite decks are playable during this time, including Cyber Dragon. This format is tons and tons of fun to deck build in using the card pool available and I highly recommend it. I hope this video convinces you. Cross the finish line with us, enjoy playing past formats, and enjoy playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Thanks again. No. Subscribe. <laughs>